it's Friday and we're back in the shed. It's Norman here. Um, we're carrying on with where we left off last week on uh, restoring steam engine 2959 Little Lauren, the eight horse Wallace expansion engine. Uh, as you can see behind me, some, some things has progressed. Um, we left off last week making these, these bronze bronzes to go in the, in the way chef bracket. Well, we've cleaned up the casting. We pushed out the other bronze. Um, I've got some footage of that that I'll, I'll insert into the video. Basically, just cleaned up the casting. It's, it's a bit of a slow week this week because um, we're waiting on materials. I thought I had a piece of bronze, which was going to be big enough, but of course it's not. <clears throat> so I've ordered all that up this week. I've ordered some some steel for the pins, um, some steel for the way shaft, and in all the rest of it but it's not here yet so uh, we're, we're on a bit of a standstill with this um, until we get the materials I've cleaned up so many other pieces ready to go but um, until until we get these uh, materials in it's just a case of cleaning things up and getting it all painted ready to go doing what we can <laughs> Right then, so here's the setup for pulling these bushes out. Just got the inner pack with a hollow ram. Same bar we used the other day, or tried to use. You see, we're just going to try and pull it out. Obviously, we're not going to be able to get the whole distance in that, so we'll have to rearrange, but let's see if it'll move. Yeah, a bit of pressure on her neck. Oh, yeah, that's going. tight on there. <laughs> it's pressed it into the tube. That might just tap out now. Again, it might not. I'm gonna um, find a bigger diameter piece to go over there now. Right, so I've re rigged this time with a bigger ID, uh, ID pipe. Let's have another go. Plus, I've got a crane holding it now just in case it all comes loose. I don't want to drop the jack. Come on, yeah.
There she is, that's her extracted. Um, that you can see the original, well not original, but a repair that's been made. Someone just shrink the bush in each end. <coughs> We're just going to replace the whole thing I think, if we can find some problems. We'll, um, we'll have a go at making a new one. That being said, there's a few other bits we need to do. We've only been putting off just little naggly, niggly, naggly, something like that. Uh, niggly bits that need finishing off. Um, this is a, one of the packers that runs behind the main bearings. As you can see, that's decided that it wants to be two. Uh, no idea why. Looks like a nice bit of raw iron. See the grain structure in it. Um, so yeah, I was just basically just found a bit of find a bit of gauge plate. So we're just going to make one of them up quick, mill it up square. I mean, how boring is that to watch? Just square that off. And just put a radius on it. Um, I'll take you in and show you the engine, show you where it's going to go, and what it's doing. We go do that quickly. So this is where it's going to go. Um, in behind the main bearings, this is the crank bearings um there's some spacer plates there's one behind and then there's one that slides down in this gap that's the one that's snapped um which just puts pressure on the back of the bearings just evenly distributes the weight because we've got a there's a jam nut a lock nut and a jam nut and that basically just keeps the the pressure on the bearing keeps them in there nice and tight stops them moving around um, it also allows for a little bit of adjustment if you wanted to align the crank but we've done all that so all we need to do is replace the one packer at the back um, as you can see I took the bearing cap off which is there so um, yeah so I mean it's not it's not much to do but it's one of them jobs we just need to do before we line bore it so I'm just gonna work on getting that in there first job for the morning so I'm just using a bit of gauge plate, like I said, for this. This is going to be nice and um, true with the thickness, parallel and, and all the rest of it. It is um, slightly wider than the original, but that is not going to matter at all. It is but, but a packer. Well, not even a packer, it's just a support for the back end of the bearing, so the thicker the better. Um, so yeah, there we go. I'm just going to mill one side, turn it, mill the next side and make a square. Pretty self explanatory. So I'm just going to do that and I'll bring it back once it's done. So the end mill wasn't quite wide enough to do that in one pass, so I've just swapped it around to do it on the side now. So basically, all I've been doing is take my measurements. Is um, the zero in the caterpillars right? See that? Maybe. And then just checking our parts, see how much we've got to take off. I think that's how it's done. So, zero it on that part. So, we've got four mil to come off that face. So I'm going to set that up in a minute. As if by magic, they must have heard me. Um, the steel has been delivered. Unfortunately, no bronze this, with this order. I thought it was going to be on with this one, but apparently not. So um, we got EN36 for the pins. These are going to be uh, hardened and ground. Was recommended to do that so we've got enough plenty to do that and then we've got our way shaft um at en8 that'll be plenty fine so we've got to put some keyways in there a couple of journals um, i'm not going to do that down and carry on with what i was doing um i want to make this bronze first before i do anything else so this is uh in stock ready to go for the next job he must have heard me Right, so back to the task in hand. Um, I've got this set up now. I'm just going to 
start to mill this angle. <clears throat> Just going to mill that that angle and then grind it on the belt grinder. Um, I've got the, of course, I've got the sign plate out, set it all up, measured it, and got the angle exactly correct. I didn't, definitely didn't just eyeball it like that. Definitely didn't just do that. So it's going to be after it. So I'm just going to mill that. We'll bring you. One. Show it about going there. Another, another bit done. Really a simple part. The only thing I've got left to do now is to put the crack in it so it matches the original. But I think I'll do that off camera. Let's um, let's go see a bit of fit. Oh, of course it done. Oh, back to the drawing board. Should have measured it. Right, take two, we'll just edit that last piece out. No one will ever notice. Oh. <laughs> I should have measured it again. Still too wide. Back to the mill, another half a mil off. Take three, another half a mil off. It's 50-50 chance of it fitting now. If it does, it'd be like a hot dog down a hallway. Back the knot off. There she goes. I will just say that I'm going to have to take a bit off the top as well. It's too high. Don't know why. Oh, I know why. Because the radius goes the other side. Right, I need a magnet to pull that out of there now. Hang fire. Try that way. Perfect. That's what the radius is for, obviously, the, the casting in the main bearing bracket or whatever you want to call this piece, housing, I suppose. It's got a radius in the bottom, so the plate needed that matching radius. There we go. Just whack that bolt up nice and tight. And that's a uh, it's good. Just gonna put the cap back on before I tighten it right down.
That's that done. Right, so it might be a bit of a shorter video this week. I'm going to um, head off up the road now and see if I can borrow a surface, well, not a surface grinder, a cylindrical grinder, um, to see about grinding some of them rods. So I'm going to bugger off and do that. Uh, at least we got a little bit done. I mean, it's stuff that I can't, there's no point filming painting and cleaning off castings. Um, no one wants to watch that, let alone do it. So. Um, I'm just going to make that do for this week. Next week we're going to carry on, hopefully, and uh, and make up that shaft for the the way shaft. So uh, we're going to crack on with that. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers, Ed.